G'day folks and welcome to another little demonstration. Uh, so this I wanted to do, uh, it's not really part of any big tutorial series or anything, but just a little trick. Uh, something I wanted to show people because I think it's not common knowledge, uh, despite how easy it is. So uh, yeah, I want to demonstrate how to compile to 64 bits using Visual C Sharp Express. And uh, hopefully this is going to help some folks out. Alrighty, so I've got um, just a install of Visual C Sharp Express here. If I click on that, and we make a little program, a new project, Windows Forms app. I might call this 64-bit um, test, just like that. Um, I drag a button on there. Might increase the text size. I'll change this to 64-bit test text 64-bit test uh, about 12.0 yeah that's good um, okay so I'll double click on the button and we'll just show a message box just something like that and we'll run the program okay there it is <laughs> there it is Click on the button. I'm 64 bits, he says. Uh, do you believe him? You'd be a fool if you did. It's not 64 bits, that's 32 bits. And this is how we know. If we just minimize this, and we find where the project actually uh, saves to. Mine's in uh, My Documents and Visual Studio 2010. There it is there. We go in there. Into bin. And finally debug. So that's the that's the uh, executional file just there, the exe or exe file. And we know that it's not 64 bits because I've got a hex editor over here. I use hxd. Download that if you like. And if we drag our program onto it, um, right here on this line here, the PE, that's a portable executable uh, header. And it says just there L and dot or, or over here we can see 4C and 01, and that's actually uh, part of the uh, magic number for a 32-bit Windows executable. Uh, if that was 64 over here instead of 4C and 86 instead of 01, then we'd know that it was a 64-bit EXE, but it's not at the moment. It's 32 bits. Okay, so how do we change it to 64 bits? There's a couple of ways to do this. The first way that we'll do is probably the uh, probably the easiest way bit of a hack but uh, let's let's have a look uh, if we come back to our project directory and we find our project file mine's called 64bittest.csproj and we want to edit that so that's just an XML file uh, to edit an XML file you're going to want a, a text editor I usually use programmers notepad but um, what's that uh, text I can't remember what it's called now. The standard Windows text thing will do the trick, but you can't use something like um, Open Office or uh, you know Microsoft Word. You need something that edits uh, standard text files. Anyway, I'm going to open this up in uh, Programmer's Notepad, and here we go. So this is the actual um, project settings for my file. So the easiest way to change it to 64 bits is to find these platform targets down here. So on the condition that the configuration and the platform is debug in x86, we want our platform target to be x64. At the moment it's x86, but we want it to be x64. So x86 pretty much means 32-bit. Um, and after we've made those two little changes there, I changed the um, platform target for debug and the platform target for release. Um, we save our project file. And then when we come back to Visual Studio, it's going to say that it noticed that we changed something, so we just say reload. And now if we run our program and we click the button again, I'm 64 bits. But guess what, folks? This time it really is. Okay, so we'll just close down. And I'll minimize that again, and we'll go back and find the exe file again. Uh, here it is here, 64-bit test.exe. If we drag that back onto a hex editor... Um, there we go, right there. So we can see where before there was a 4C01, now we've got 6486. This is a 64-bit uh, Windows executable. Okay, so that was probably the quickest way to do it, but it's a bit of a hack, and we'd really prefer to do it a, a different way, since, um, I mean, I have no idea if the Visual Studio IDE isn't going to save over those changes. 
in the project file, it might do. It might do. So we want to change it properly in uh, the Visual Studio IDE. And this is how we do that. So first of all, if I just change that back to what we had, it was um, here in my projects. Uh, okay, so this was x86. And this was x86 also. Um, okay, so we come back. Yes, reload, brass. You're good, mate. And we click on here. I might just change the text to this button. It's annoying me that it's called button one. I'll call it click me. Click me. Okay, so anyway, what we want to do is um, we want to uh, change the build configuration. Now, if you right click here on your solution, uh, you'll see I've got configuration manager, but you might not have that. Um, a couple of things that we should set up first. If we go tools and options, um, what you've got to do to get that configuration manager up is first of all, this uh, show all settings down here in the lower left corner has to be checked. Show all settings. And then if you come down to projects and solutions, um, and over here you'll see one of the options is show advanced build configurations. So I've got that checked. And that's what shows the um, build configurations here when I right click on solution. It's that. I also changed this to save new projects when created. Otherwise, it saves it to some strange place. It saves it in the middle of nowhere in some temporary file. And then when you go to close your application, it says, oh, do you want to save it? And you go, well, sure. I thought you were saving it already. Uh, anyway, once you've got those build configurations opened up, um, or sorry, once you've got that setting checked, uh, you can go into the configuration manager. And in here, it's pretty similar to what we did in um, C++ to change the 64 bits. Uh, at the moment we've got debug and that's x86 and we've got release and that's x86 but what we want to do is we go um, new and change it from any CPU to x64. Uh, we want to uh, keep copy settings from x86 and we also want to keep that checked create new project platforms. So then you click OK and we might make one for release as well. It seems to have done it already. That's good. And then we click close. Uh, now if we run it, click me, I'm 64 bits and it really is. Let's have a look. So it's probably going to have uh, changed the directory. Yep, it's, it's no longer saving it to debug. It's uh, saving it to x64. But if we go into, no, maybe we, yeah, here we go. Okay, so we just compiled there to x64 and release. If I drag that onto a hex editor, there we go, 6486, the magic number for a 64-bit EXE. So maybe you want to change a few things and make it save to uh, the same debug directory as your 32-bit version. And we can do that by going into Project and then the name of your project and properties. And come down here to Build. And this is where you set the directory. So at the moment I've got it on uh, Active Release and X64 and it's saying that it's going to save the output to bin x64 and release but you can get rid of that x64 if you want and that'll save the 64-bit uh, release to just bin release the same as a 32-bit release uh, if I go to debug we change that as well I don't know you don't have to do this but I like to yeah that's good okay just save that rebuild and play Look me, I'm 64 bits. Okay, so that seems to be working fine. We just minimize and we go back to our uh, normal debug directory. Well, what did I just compile it to? No idea. Okay, well that's 64 bits in debug. And in release, I think it'll probably be 64 bits as well. Yeah, 64 bits. Okay, so we want a really easy way to change between 64 bits and 32 bits, and you get that by going into um, uh, settings here, tools and settings, and we change to expert settings. And once you change to expert settings, you get these, the um, solution configurations and the solution platforms drop down lists. And from there, you can very quickly change it to x64 or x86. So if I change that to x86 and debug, 
just like that. I click play. I'm 64 bits, it says anyway. But um, when we go to the directory and we find our exe file, uh, right there, 4C01, that's a 32-bit. And then with a couple of clicks, oh sorry, just here, x64 and play, click me. Now it'll be 64 bits. There we go. Alrighty, so that's how you um, compile to 64 bits using uh, Visual C Sharp Express 2010. Good stuff. Thanks for listening.